Good evening, church. Uh, tonight we'll sing the song, uh, Shine, Jesus Shine, so we can all sing together. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness, shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Bliss, Spirit, bliss. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and From the shadows into your radiance By the blood I may enter your brightness Search me, try me, consume all my darkness Shine on me Shine on me Shine, Jesus, shine Display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. All right, let's talk a little bit tonight. If you have your Bibles, we are in Luke chapter 15, where we were at Sunday. But well, we're going to move from the parable of the lost sheep to the parable of the lost coin. And y'all, I apologize if you see me struggling to read because my technology did not work very well tonight. So I'm reading off paper and didn't realize how small these words get, uh, these letters. Um, look with me, if you will, at verses 8 through 10. And if you're able, if you would stand for the reading of God's word. Starting in verse 8, it says, Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp? Sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. 
And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. You may be seated. Thank you. So as you may recall, um, the parable starting in Luke 15 began when Jesus is questioned by the uh, Pharisees. And they questioned him and asked why uh, he sits among sinners. And they ask him this question, hoping to catch him in a trap. And so what he does in response is he tells three parables. And of course, Sunday we, we spoke about uh, the parable of the lost sheep. And the hundred lost sheep, or the hundred sheep and the one that was lost. And if you recall, Jesus spoke about going after that, that one sheep. And as I was studying that verse, and I began to study this verse, and then on Sunday, I'm guest speaking at my church that I grew up at and was at for 30 years, and I studied the parable of the lost, um, of the parable of the prodigal son, or the lost son, I began to, to really get in depth and study and look and say, you know, there's a reason. Y'all know I teach math, so I'm, I'm a math person. I said, there's a reason. You look at, at the parable of the lost sheep, and there's a hundred sheep. And then, and then that number lowers down to ten coins in the next parable that we're talking about. And then as you go on into the parable I'll be speaking on Sunday, there's only two sons. And so as you look at these numbers, you see that Jesus is encouraging us to seek the lost. But I believe, and reading the scriptures and, and some of the other things that I read about these verses, I believe that, that what Jesus was also trying to show us was when you have those hundred, those hundred sheep and, and the, the 99 are safe and the one is lost, he's asking us or telling us that, it, that we need to reach out. We need to reach out beyond our doors, beyond our community. We need to go and search for those who are lost. But as we look at the parable of the lost coin, I believe that we need to be looking closer to home. And I think that what Jesus was saying here was that not only are there those that are lost outside of the church, but there are those that are lost inside the church as well. You see, the coin represents the unbeliever, the sinner who is lost within the church or the community. I think you can look at the community as well. A member who has gone astray and is lost both to God and the church. So what do we know about this coin? Well, first of all, we know that this coin was greatly desired and had extreme worth. This lady had lost a coin that most likely, if you read up on it, it tells us that it most likely was worth about a day's wage. So that's a lot of money back in those days. That, can you imagine these days losing an entire day's wage? Of course, she was most likely um, panicked. And it seemed to her at that moment that that coin was lost and doomed to be lost forever. How many of you been there? I, I don't lose stuff, but now my wife, she, I better not say that. Because she'll be listening to this, I might get a beat when I get home. No, I am the one who loses everything. I can't find anything. I, I'd love to have one of those things that beeps on everything I own so I can find it. From the remote, to my keys, to my wallet. I can't find anything. That's why I wear $3 sunglasses. I wear $5 uh, reading glasses because I can't keep up with anything. So I've been there. I've panicked because I've lost something, and I said, oh, it's gone. It's never coming back. It is lost forever. But thank God that when it comes to Jesus, it's not like that. When we lost we don't have to be lost forever. So why was this coin lost? Well, 
The first reason was because of others. Now, you may say, well, that's kind of tough. That's, that's putting a lot of pressure on us as people. But if you read, now, if you think about this coin or anything, as that matter, when something gets lost, it's usually your fault, right? You're the one that misplaced it. You're the one that sat it down. So as we read this, this uh, parable, we find that it's a striking picture of the responsibility of members for one another, for Christians for one another, for those in our church that may not have accepted Christ yet. And so how are these people lost? Well, the first way, when we look at, when we look at a coin, why was that coin lost? That coin was most likely lost because, number one, maybe it had been ignored. How many times do, do people come in and out of your life, either in the community or in and out of the church, that are completely ignored? Yeah, we may speak to them, we may be cordial to them, but when it comes to their salvation, we completely ignore whether or not they know Jesus. They're in church. They must be saved, right? They're sitting here. The second reason is neglecting the coin. Just like the coin, oftentimes a person can know the coin is there and know its value, yet they neglect it. How often has that happened? We have people come into our church. They come into our presence. We know that they are a valuable part of our church, but we ignore them. We neglect them. What happens when you neglect something? What happens when you neglect something? Well, when you neglect something, eventually you forget about it. You forget where it is. Sometimes you don't have to lose stuff. I mean, if you like me, it didn't move. It was right where I put it, but I still lost it. Amen? I mean, I know I can set my wallet down, and somebody will tell me, they'll say, well, you need to look at the last place you had it. Well, I can't remember the last place I had it. If I did, it wouldn't be lost. Third, why was the, why was the coin lost? Third, and lastly, was what I just talked about, unconsciously placing the coin someplace. You see, little attention may have been given to it. We go about our daily affairs, as we talked about earlier, we go about our daily affairs, we come into the church, we see people, we even, you may have people that come into the church, church, I'm telling you, there are people in our midst right now they come to church, they, they volunteer for stuff, they, they do things. You even got Sunday school teachers, you even have pastors from time to time in churches. When they come into a church, they don't know Jesus. They don't know Jesus. They're living a double life. Oftentimes, we have people who, who are lost because we place them on the back burner. We place them somewhere else. We don't pay attention to what's going on. So where are they lost? Well, it tells us in, in Scripture, if we go back and read, it tells us that um, she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the where? The house. The house. It says she sweeps the house and searches carefully until she finds it. So where is it lost? It's lost right here in the church. You see, the coin, although lost in the house, was lost in dust and dirt. It was lost in the tarnish of the world. It was not clean like the other nine sitting on the dresser. The dust and dirt slowly covered and tarnished it. You see, the coin's experience, although in the house was terrible. How many have been there? You go to a church and 
The word's not being preached. You go to a church, they're not a praying church. They don't believe in prayer. They don't believe in giving. They don't believe in reaching anybody. I think um, Pastor Frankie says it best. They worry about my four and no more. How many times have we seen a person lost because of the church not doing what they should do by allowing that lost person to continue to be lost? The coins experience, although in the house it was terrible, being lost, it felt useless. It couldn't contribute. If I lose a coin, if I lose money in my home, what value is it of me? It's no value at all. It can't contribute to my needs. The same can be said for those in our church that aren't saved. They, can, can, they can't contribute. Yeah, they can sweep the floor. They can do things like that. But the bottom line, church, is we're here to see souls saved. And I'm telling you, lost people can't lead others to Jesus. You can't lead somebody to where you've never been. The coins, the coins experience made it helpless. It could not fulfill its purpose. Every Christian... Every one of us was saved to continue to bring lost people to Jesus. The coin was not present to participate. All you got to do is look around. Wednesday nights, Sunday mornings, Sunday nights. If you're not here, you can't do the work that Jesus needs us to do. You're of no use to what Jesus wants us to do. You must be present to participate. This coin was no longer present, so it was of no longer use. Finally, the coin was not aware that it was lost. How often does that happen? How often do we have people in our church who have no idea they're lost. They have no idea. They don't have discomfort. They can sit through a sermon, and they may tell the preacher he did a good job, but they felt nothing right here. Why? Why? Because they're lost, and they don't even know it. says there is no excuse for following peers and stronger personalities. There is no excuse for being passive and weak and easily misled. A church member is eventually responsible for his or her own life. You see, although this coin was lost and although it may have been ignored, although it may have been useless, Eventually, each and every one of us are responsible for ourselves. The other family member may not know the truth about the love of God in Christ, about the privileges of being saved, having one's sins forgiven, inheriting eternal life. Therefore, a family member is responsible to get out and seek the truth from those who do know the truth. It is our job to tell them and to do our job, but at the same time, they have to understand that it is also their personal responsibility. Verse 9 says, And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Notice that not only did she seek the coin, but she, she, she kept seeking the coin until it was found. She kept seeking the coin until it was found. Church, it says, the woman changed the whole atmosphere of the house. And this is the important part. If you don't get anything else out of the sermon or out of our study, 
she lit a candle for the houses of the day were very, excuse me, the houses of the day were very dark. She lit a candle. The only way that she was able to find that candle was with light. Evangelina just sang a song for us about light. Who is the light of the world? Who is our light? Jesus Christ. It says the woman's only hope of finding the coin was light. The light represents Christ, the light of the world. The woman turned to Christ to bring light to her dark house. She went nowhere without the light. She looked behind every door, under every table, in every drawer. Everywhere she looked, she took the light. How many of us can say that tonight? How many of us, everywhere we go, whether it's in a church building, whether it's in a restaurant, whether it's at a friend's house, wherever we go, do we take the light with us? Do we take Jesus with us? Or are we the ones that when we go somewhere, we say, Jesus, we're going to go out with our friends tonight. So, Jesus, you stay home. I'm going to go out tonight. I'm going to enjoy my friends. That's not what she did. See, she knew that without that light, there was no hope. There was no hope of that coin being found. And the same can be said for those right here in our church, for those right here in our community. Without the light, there is no hope. The woman swept throughout the house. She swept the loose, the clinging dirt out of the house. As long as there was loose dirt and filth in the house, she might have never found a coin. As long as there's sin, salvation can never be found. As long as there's unrepented sin, foundation, salvation can never be found. You see, when we take the light, we must also let people know. That doesn't mean you're judging them. You don't judge, but you let them know what God's word says. You let them know that what God's word says about what they're doing. The woman searched diligently for the coin until she found it. How many of, of us can honestly say, that we diligently, diligently go after the lost people in our community and in our church. I know I fell there many times, many times. So what's the result? The result is, it says, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents the result of that one coin being found is joy it says that it brought gr great joy the woman's prayers her efforts had paid off the coin had been found and there was joy there was celebration you see I'm sure when she lost this coin, she let everybody know that she had lost it. And so many people were worried about this because it wasn't just like us losing a dollar today. I don't know what you guys make per day, but if you lost that, I'm sure the people closest to you would know you lost it. And you would ask them to pray for you. I know I would. And so because of that, not only did it bring her great joy, but it brought them great joy. How often do we celebrate when somebody comes to know Jesus? How often do we, do we really, really, really tell that person how we feel about them when they find Jesus? Do we come up to them? Do we welcome them to church? And then when 12 o'clock gets here and we're off at lunch, never think about them again? I truly believe that that's why so many people wind up right back where they were at. Because 
the church doesn't do their part in making sure that the people who come to our church are talked to, are celebrated when they, when they receive salvation, they're celebrated, but we continue, continue to be a part of their lives, continue to talk to them, continue to celebrate that moment with them and be joyful. The woman could now rejoice because, one, she had, she had secured her coin because of the light of Jesus Christ, because the dirt and filth had been swept out of her house, because of her diligent prayer, and because of her effort. Finally, I'll close with this in verse 10. It says, the last, I won't read the whole verse, but it says, the angels of God rejoice over one sinner who repents. I talked about this Sunday. Repentance is not saying I'm sorry. Repentance is not, is not saying I'm sorry because... I got caught doing it. Repentance is I'm going in one direction. Jesus got a hold of my heart. I'm going to turn and I'm going to go the other direction. I'm no longer going to make the same mistakes that I've been making. And if I do make a mistake, I'm going to ask Jesus to forgive me. I'm going to get on my face and I'm going to pray about those things. And I'm here to tell you, church, if we like this woman carry the light everywhere we go, if we sweep the filth and dirt out of our life, and if we pray diligently, we can, we can reach out the other, to others. We can reach out and have others come and be a part of our, of our life. And I can promise you that we'll see fewer and fewer lost coins. There'll be fewer and fewer people who are ignored, fewer and fewer people who are not a part of the kingdom of God. But the only way that that happens is if we are diligent about going after those who are lost. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this night. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, as we looked at the parables of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, Lord, and we see that ultimately, Lord, our goal should be to see others come to know you. Ultimately, Lord, it is our job to help bring others to Christ. Father, I pray that each one of us, if we don't get anything else tonight, Lord, that we will be challenged when we go to work and when we go and be around our families to the ball field, Lord, wherever we go, Lord, that we will be diligent about asking others if they know who Jesus is. Lord, our pastor, he, every time we have people here for our fundraiser, Lord, he goes around and he asks them if they know Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will put those people in our path this week, this Friday, next Friday when we have our fundraiser. Lord, I pray that people that come into our, our house, into our church. Lord, give us the boldness to ask, do you know him? Give us the boldness to speak up and tell others about you. Help us, Lord. We 
thank you for this night. And we thank you for your son, Jesus. And we thank you for him dying on the cross so we may have eternal life. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.